The atheist is the one who, who looks down his nose at us and say, you simple-minded people. Why should I respect a capricious, mean-minded, stupid God who creates a world which is so full of injustice and pain? You can deny the God of the Bible his place and you can make Charles Darwin your God. All you have to do is walk into any children's hospital and you know there's no God. At least no good God. Maybe there's an evil God. So is there you know, a God then, Neil deGrasse Tyson? I'll be about to have breaking I, I news. I don't know. Is there a God? <laughs> Does it make sense to be an atheist, to believe that nobody times nothing equals everything? Does that make sense? You're, 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 you're a professor where? You have a PhD in what? What was there at the start? We don't know. But I don't know and you don't know. I know that the world came into being because nothing exploded. You have your faith. I have my... But no human brain, unless you want to correct me, can actually comprehend nothingness, right? No, but it's, a, it's an, a fallacy to think that because I don't understand how it happened, therefore God did it. I mean, that's just weak. The needs to get rid of God and then explain what can't be explained. We are each free to believe what we want. And it's my view that the simplest explanation is, there is no God. No one created the universe, and no one directs our fate. This leads me to a profound realization. There is probably no heaven, and no afterlife either. How could you possibly believe that personality comes out of non-personality, complexity comes out of simplicity, and simplicity comes out of nothing? And how can you give yourself a degree, Romans 1, professing yourself to be wise, you've just become an absolute fool? I mean, you know, I'm not a religious person or anything. And if there was a God, like, this is proof that there isn't. <laughs> this is f***ed up. Um, so, yeah, it just, <laughs> it's just f***ed up, you guys. Like, it's just like... You don't assault God and get away with it. Nothing fails like prayer. That would be evidence. If you could give some scientific evidence that prayer actually makes an organic difference, not just makes you feel better, but an actual difference in the real world, that would be something to put on the table. The fact that that's not put on the table shows that prayer is pretty much talking to yourself. Here we are with science on our side and you want to come to us as people who believe that your sky father built the world and created the world in six days out of nothing. We're gonna find something. God is gonna be at the center of that and there'll be no science to apply. I'm gonna look for the science first because that's how the history of this exercise has unfolded. You wanna bring that nonsense to me when I'm a scientific person who knows better than that. Suppose it's all true mm. and you walk up to the pearly gates and you are confronted by God. What will Stephen Fry say to him, her, or it? I'll say bone cancer in children? What's that about? How dare you? How dare you create a world in which there is such misery that is not our fault? It's not right. It's utterly, utterly evil. That's what I'd say. Those are the two sides of the world that are offended by the folly of the gospel that we preach. And you think you're going to get in no, on that? but I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. They're wrong. Apostate science looking for pseudo-reasons to reject Christianity and the God of the Bible. It is not motivated by the intellect that is motivated by immorality. There's no need for a belief in God. Millions, tens of millions of people on this planet live happy lives, productive lives, moral lives, purposeful lives, lives of hope and meaning without deluding ourselves that there are these invisible personalities populating some supernatural realm. You want to worship God? Holy? Omniscient? True? Or do you want to worship Charles Darwin, who is the stooge for atheistic humanism? The majority of people, though, deny God's existence one way or the other. Many who are not philosophical atheists are practical atheists. Although they do not reject the concept of God, they live as though God didn't exist. Titus chapter 1 and verse 6 describes such people as follows. They profess to know God, but by their deeds they deny Him, being detestable and disobedient and worthless for any good deed. That has been the norm since Adam and Eve. Immediately after they sinned, they hid themselves from God. They tried to act as if God didn't exist, and mankind has followed 
that same pattern throughout history. Romans 1 tells us that men know in their hearts that God exists. Verse 19 says that which is known about God is evident within them. Verse 20 says since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen. Verse 21 says they know God and verse 28 says they did not see fit to acknowledge him as God. You can separate God from religion, mm -hmm. which is what I do. I believe in God. I believe in me. Same person. Good people, wise people, sensible people don't say they are God. Now the celebrities outright deny the existence of God and think that when they die, nothing happens. And they are certainly not afraid to make it known publicly for millions to see on live TV. It is both interesting and disheartening that men who is created in the image of God goes to the distance to defy God in every way imaginable. They go against palpable evidence of God's existence that even they themselves cannot deny. Although many of them, such as Morgan Freeman, think that after death, they will simply cease to exist. Governor, where are we going to go when we die? Be honest with us. Well, the truth us. is that we go six feet under. That's and it? And we're going to rot there. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. That's it. I it's thought you were going to me to be uplifting. No, but that's, that's the reality. That's how you welcome me to LA? Hopefully. The book of Hebrews teaches us instead an appointment with God awaits all men after death. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27 says, It is appointed for men to die once, and after this comes judgment. So when you have a generation who adamantly refuses to honor God and deny the salvation that is found in the Lord Jesus Christ, then God will one day answer their prayer proportionately, exceedingly abundantly above all they could ask or think. Therefore, when you spend all your life rejecting Jesus Christ, fighting against your own conscience in order to remove the reality of God, then one day you will truly be separated from God in hell for eternity. I believe that an atheist goes to hell. Let me ask you that. Do you believe an atheist will go to hell? Well, that is obviously what Jesus taught. If I deny God, I'm choosing to live my life separate from God, Let me ask, what which means like, sir? God is going to grant my request to live my life separate from him, and I'll spend eternity separate from him. Notice how shocked he was when the preacher told him exactly what will happen to him if he dies without Christ and denying God's existence. And all unrepented sinners will react the exact same way when they hear the final judgment of God on the last day. It will be a day of sorrow, a day of pain and a day of wailing without anyone to console and no place to hide. Will Darren, an avowed atheist, wrote, The greatest question of our time it is not communism versus individualism. It is not Europe versus America. It is not even the East versus the West. It is whether men can bear to live without God. He understood even as an atheist that the major issue of all of life is the reality of God. The track record of people saying God is behind this and then you add a little science to it and you find out no, we can completely explain it and control it, then that the history of that exercise is so rich with science discovering the unknowns that were previously ascribed to deity, like lightning bolts and weather systems. Mm. There was Poseidon, there was Zeus, there was, just look at the history of this. Mm. I'm, I'm not given reason to say, we're gonna find something, God is gonna be at the center of that and there'll be no science to apply. I'm gonna look for the science first because that's how the history of this exercise has unfolded. If God came to you and said, I made everything in six days, what would you say to him? Well, now, now listen, God, uh, there are some things you need to know about science. Creation, as I said, has no connection to science as we know science. Science as a reality was created by God at the creation. Science is simply the observation of the way things are. And they are the way they are because he created them that way in six days. You can't explain to somebody the science of the resurrection of Lazarus, the science of the bread and the loaves, the science of an axe head that floats, the science of the parting of the Red Sea. It has no scientific explanation. The miracle of creation is just the most massive of all miracles. It is not explicable by any observable, repeatable, fixed laws. So all you're left with is fidelity, to accept the truth, believe the truth, be faithful to it. What do we know now? about where we've come from and what don't we know? Okay, we know once you've got um, a self-replicating entity, which nowadays is DNA, but it wasn't originally, once you've got life started, once natural selection, Darwinian natural selection has got going, then we pretty much understand the four billion year 
history of what's given rise to us and all other living creatures. Somebody says, well, couldn't God have used evolution? That question is intrusive, irritating, and irrelevant. If you want an answer, he did not. He did not. He made everything in six days. Why are you questioning what God has said? Since the creation of the world until the very last day of judgment before the great white throne of God, everyone who has ever lived up until that point and denied the existence of God, all atheists and all Christ rejectors will be without excuse. The existence of an eternal, perfect and holy God is evident within them. That is to say, their conscience tells them that there is a creator, there is a righteous lawgiver and a sovereign in the universe. Romans chapter 2 and verse 15 says, in that they demonstrate the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience bearing witness in their thoughts alternately accusing or else defending them. Furthermore, the entire creation, the moon and the sun, the heavens and the stars, the ocean, the trees and all the animals stand as a constant reminder and a faithful witness to all mankind that there is a God and he ought to be worshipped, there is a king and he ought to be revered, and there is a Lord and every knee ought to bow to him and every tongue ought to confess his name. And you think you're going to get in no. on that? But I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to get in on his terms. They're wrong. Now, if I died and it was, it was Pluto, Hades, and if it was the 12 Greek gods, then I would have more truck with it because the Greeks were, they didn't pretend not to be human in their appetites and in their capriciousness and in their unreasonableness. They didn't present themselves as being all seeing, all wise, all kind, all beneficent. Because the God who created this universe, if it was created by God, is quite clearly a maniac utter maniac, totally selfish, totally. We have to spend our life on our knees thanking him? What kind of God would do that? Yes, the world is very splendid, but it also has in it insects whose whole life cycle is to burrow into the eyes of children and make them blind. They eat outwards from the eyes. Why? Why did you do that to us? You could easily have made a, a creation in which that didn't exist. It is simply not acceptable. Now, if you like, you can choose Charles Darwin. You can let him be your God. You can deny the God of the Bible his place, and you can make Charles Darwin your God. And you'll have a lot of company, or you'll have a lot of highbrow company, since Charles Darwin's view dominates 99% of the universities in America and 99.9% .9 of the universities in Europe. In the last decade, 93% of the National Science Academy members were self-described atheists, 93%. 98.7% of evolutionary biologists are atheists. God has so clearly revealed himself to us in his word and through his son Jesus Christ that man is without excuse if he persists in unbelief. But man in his conscious hatred of God does not want to bow to him. In fact, if man had his way, he would prefer that the God of the Bible did not exist. The unregenerate mind is God's would be murderer. Psalms chapter 14 and verse 1 says, The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. You have to be a fool to think that the entire universe comes from absolutely nothing. That is real madness, real ignorance of the mind that is in abject darkness, abject poverty of truth in light of the knowledge of God. Men's mind is hostile toward God, for it does not subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so according to Romans chapter 8 and verse 7. Therefore, every fallen sinner does his best to eliminate the true God. He invents false gods. He postulates demonic theology that says God is dead. He devises philosophies and lifestyle that assert that the very idea of God is ludicrous. We don't know how it started. And that's still a mystery, and it may always be a mystery, because it happened a very long time ago, and uh, we may never know exactly what did happen. We know the kind of thing it had to be. What kind of thing do you think it was? It was the origin of a self-replicating molecule, a molecule that makes copies of itself. DNA is such a molecule, but the original one was almost certainly not DNA, because DNA is a, it's been called a high-tech replicator. There had to be a precursor to DNA. Something, the laws of chemistry, gave rise to a, a molecule which had this unusual property of making copies of itself, which mutated, changed in mm. random ways, and that gave rise to competition between rival versions of it, 
and that gave rise to the whole panoply of life eventually. Min suppresses his knowledge of God through unrighteous behavior in a vain attempt to silence the truth he already knows. Men would wish God out of existence if he had his way. They ignore the many compelling proofs God has given us of himself through his creation in our reasoning power. You know, atheism is not just about not believing there is a, is not believing there's a God, but on the assumption that there is one, what kind of God is he? It's perfectly apparent that he is monstrous, utterly monstrous, and deserves no respect whatsoever. The moment you banish him, your life becomes simpler, purer, cleaner, more worth living, in my opinion. That sure is the longest answer to that question that I ever <laughs> got in this entire series. The needs to get rid of God and then explain what can't be explained. Apostate science looking for pseudo-reasons to reject Christianity and the God of the Bible. It is not motivated by the intellect, it is motivated by immorality. You go back and you read about Rousseau, Descartes, Marx, Nietzsche, and those, you will read of the most black, wicked, wretched, immoral, dissolute, depraved, debauched lives. They came up with a philosophy that would eliminate God so they could live the way they wanted to live. And once God was eliminated, then somebody had to come up with a way to explain the universe. And now there was an apostasy from the Christian faith. Charles Darwin was the devil's agent. And so he came up with a convenient explanation for the universe for an apostate world. They all know that if God can be separated from origins, if God can be separated from creation, then he can be separated from morality. He can be separated from ethics. He can be separated from behavior. And if God is separated from ethics and morality and behavior, then there is no ultimate judge of our behavior. There's no sin. There's no guilt. There's no judgment. There's no punishment to fear. Live any way you want to live. And that's how those philosophers lived, and that's how Darwin lived. Free to live any way you want. There's no creator. So make your choice. In Acts chapter 17, the Apostle Paul told the Greeks, You are worshipping in ignorance. Let me tell you about this unknown God. He can be known. It does no good at all to guess about who He is or how to worship Him. That verse states two facts about the true and living God. That one, He exists, and two, it is possible to know something of His nature. It suggests that the one who seeks after God, the true worshipper, must have those two issues settled in his mind. God exists, and it is possible to know who he is. By the way, Charles Darwin was a very strong advocate for eugenics and genocide. He was a twisted individual by all accounts. One of his biographers says, by his own admissions, he was a sadist and he took great enjoyment in torturing and killing animals, especially loved to kill birds by pounding on their heads with a hammer. From the time he was 17 years old, he dedicated his summers and autumns to killing animals not for the meat, but for the sheer delight of killing. While in our day, this biographer says, this might bother a member of PETA, it should be particularly troublesome to the Christian who believes Proverbs 12.10, the righteous man regards the life of his animal, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. And by the way, as he made his plans uh, for the voyage on the Beagle, where he was supposed to be discovering these evolutionary things, Darwin included several guns in hopes that he might, quote, be able to kill some cannibals. Even as a child, he would beat puppies simply from enjoying the sense of power. Entire books have been written on the subject of Darwin's psychological problems. Listen to this. He suffered from depression, agoraphobia, that's fear of crowds, insomnia, vision alterations, hallucinations, malaise, vertigo, shaking, tachycardia, fainting spells, shortness of breath, trembling, nausea, vomiting, dizziness, muscle twitches, spasms, tremors, cramps, colics, bloating, headaches, nervous exhaustion, skin blisters, tinnitus, and sensations of loss of consciousness and impending death. According to Darwin's own testimony, his problems began at 16 years of age, and by the time he was 28, he was virtually incapacitated by mental illnesses. These maladies were so chronic that Darwin's scholar Michael Roos concluded that he lived as an invalid for the last 43 years of his life. You don't assault God and get away with it. No scientist can explain nothingness, can they? 
Plausibly. Well, well, maybe they can't. You'd have to talk to a physicist. But even Could you explain it? No, quite. I'm not a physicist. But no, but you're a very smart guy, and you're I'm, a very vehement atheist. No, I'm not. I'm not that vehement. Well, you're pretty um, vehement. I mean, you, you just think all belief in all gods is ludicrous, right? I think that it doesn't help to introduce complexity at the outset. That's my point. No, no, I, I get that, but... but no, well, you, I don't think you do get it. Well, no, I do, because I... But you're asking me to consider that my own belief in a, a deity that may be above human thinking and understanding and brain power that was there universally, that my theory is scientifically flawed, whereas I would throw back at you, OK, but I need to be given an alternative. I need some scientist somewhere to explain to me, right, four, four billion years, all right, but then what was there before that? Well, scientists can't answer that. But the crux of the issue for those who deny God's existence is that one day they will die and will appear before a holy and righteous God. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 29, anyone who has ignored the law of Moses is put to death without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severe punishment he will deserve who has trampled underfoot the Son of God and has regarded as unclean the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified and has insulted the spirit of grace. And verse 31 in that same passage says, it is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Contemporary atheists confirm that the road to atheism always begins in a biology class with Charles Darwin. And it always appeals to sinners running away from God, running in the direction of their lusts and sin. Creation cannot be understood any other way than by believing the revelation of the Creator. If you want to choose Charles Darwin, you can have him. But Charles Darwin is not a hermeneutic to interpret Genesis 1 and 2. The point is this. Science can explain things starting with simplicity and working up to complexity. No, I get that. But where science can't explain something, i.e. in the case I just gave you, is it not possible that you're all wrong? on the atheist of side of the argument. We could, we could be all wrong, but what... And you what might get a shocking surprise one day well, when you're you no might. longer with us. You, you might. And you discover we were right all yeah. along. It's possible. <laughs> you can see it's possible. It's highly unlikely. Um, <laughs> the, you don't know though, do you? No, of course I don't. Um, are you willing to bet eternity on a nonsensical idea that there is no God? Or will you repent of your sin and surrender your life to God today? He is the God of peace and the one who redeems lost and desperate souls like I was once, but now I am saved and free by the grace of God and faith in Jesus Christ. Remember the story of the emperor's new clothes? You think you're dressed and you're naked. Well, some of these scientists now, some of these atheistic scientists are beginning to realize that They've got to come up with something else other than sheer random evolution. So they come up with what they call ID, intelligent design. They don't want to say who the intelligence is because that, they don't want to get to the biblical God. But it seems as though there's some intelligence out there. That, that's, that's a big leap. You, you would think that would be the most obvious thing that any scientist would ever come up with. They don't want to say it's God, but it's becoming overwhelmingly clear as we now get into electron microscopy and get down to the very tiniest part components that make up life, that the complexity and the information coding is so sophisticated that the, the, the idea of randomness is just completely insane but still an unwillingness to embrace God. I come to you today not to condemn, but to spread a message of hope and redemption while it is still day, while you still have time to repent. We are all sinners in one way or another. We have all fallen short of the glory of God and deserved His righteous and just wrath. But the good news is that God loves us to the degree that He gave us His only begotten Son so that whosoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. Unlike the atheists and Christ rejectors who deny God's undeniable existence, we must humble ourselves before God and confess our sins with a repentant heart. When we do so, God promises to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Remember, God's love and grace are available to all who seek Him. No sin is too great for God to forgive and no one is beyond God's redemption. So I urge you today to turn to God, repent of your sin and run to Jesus Christ and He will give you life, He will give you peace and He will give you hope, eternal hope. So that God might save you and justify you, yes, He is the suffering servant. And to the Greek, you're looking for a, a, a strong man? How about a man who overcame death 
hell and the grave because he's not just a strong man, he's the God man. Power of God, the wisdom of God. And the difference is not human intellect. The difference is the cross. The difference is the supernatural work of God in the heart of the sinner that allows him to see the beauty and the glory of the cross. To see that that is our only hope. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So to those who are working and straining and wrestling to earn the favor of God, be still and know that he is God. Jesus says his yoke is easy and his burden is light. To those of you who think that you're so wise that you don't need God, repent. Acknowledge the folly of your dependence on human wisdom and flee to Christ. to all under the sound of my voice. Christ is our only hope. Be found in him and live. This is it for this video and I hope you found it helpful. Help us share it on all social media platform and especially with a friend who struggles with God's existence. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. I invite you to subscribe to our Patreon where we have weekly devotionals and become a channel member today. If this is your first time on the channel, I hope you subscribe. If not, I hope to see you on our next video. With love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. Mm -hmm.